everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be unboxing some grow lights with you that I ordered from Gemma LED and I'm also going to be looking at positioning them and just showing you the two different types that I've ordered. One of them is the standard chip on board with an internal fan for a cooling system that I showed you in my lighting video which I'll link down below and I actually decided after that, I said I needed some more lights, so I had a look at the website and I ordered the bundle of two of the chip on board LED grow lights and I also ordered their more expensive 100 watt LED grow light, um, which doesn't actually have a fan, it's passively cooled, so it is a lot more expensive actually, but I'm hoping for that money it's going to be incredibly bright and the reasoning behind this was I wanted to get another grow light for my little highlight orchid area. I also have just converted the wardrobe in my orchid room into extra orchid space and also some storage on the top shelves there for pots and baskets and things. And I'm currently lighting it with just an Ikea lamp with a 1100 lumen bulb in and I really wanted to get a really nice grow light for this area because I can keep quite a lot of orchids in there as you can see I've got a lot of hanging space so we're going to have a look at my new grow lights and we're going to have a look at positioning them as well because that's something that I'll need to play around with and I thought would be quite cool to show you rather than just doing an unboxing video and also the kind of relative brightness of the two lights which might help you a bit if you're struggling to decide between them so with that said I will get to unboxing So that is my invoice. I also ordered the extra cable for one of the grow lights because before I had to order an additional cable, they're just standard like kettle computer cable type things, um, but they don't come with a very long one as standard. Oh, I think this is the 100 watt one. Yeah, I'm not that much of a plant nerd that I get super excited about grow lights now. Oh, it's massive. I was not expecting this. The pictures on the website actually aren't very good for this one. Um, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. Obviously it's 100 watts, so I was expecting double the power. Oh, it's heavy. Oh my goodness. It's really heavy. It's very well packaged, as you can see. Okay. So for size comparison, that is my hand. So I think it should do pretty well in that orchid wardrobe. It's very heavy, so I'm just gonna get it out of the way. I will show you them all once I've finished unboxing. Oh, it's a different cable, so I'm glad that I did order the three meter cable for this because that's not a standard cable that I could just easily get off Amazon. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, I'm really rubbish with like electrical lighting, that sort of thing, so somebody else could probably tell me what that is. My boyfriend could probably even tell me what that is, but. Oh, and I got this last time, and I'm really happy that they've given me this again because I lost the first one because my boyfriend stole it for doing some car work because it's a really, really bright, like, candling light. It's not got any batteries in at the moment, I think. No, it hasn't. I'll give it, get some batteries in there and show you. They give you this for free when you order and they're really useful for seeing, like, Cattleya sheaths, whether you've got buds in them. They're a super, super bright little torch. So yeah, I'm glad that I've got another one because my boyfriend has pinched my previous one. Okay, so I've just put some batteries in the Gemma uh, LED torch to try and show you how bright it is. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's perfect for checking sheaths for buds. So, I can have one and my boyfriend can have one now for his car stuff. So that is the giant grow light out of the way. So 
So these are the two leads for the chip on board grow lights. So this one is like the plug that I was telling you about, which is the sand kind of computer cable. So if you've got a long one of those lying around, you can just use that, I think. Um, but I ordered uh, another one off Amazon, like a three meter one. And I don't use these because I clip them onto my shelving, but these are, I'll probably use these as vanda hangers to be honest. Actually, I think I will. I've got two of these lying around from before to show you. Really secure um, clips on a wire. So if you want, you can clip this from like the ceiling or whatever. I might use them for my vanda baskets <laughs> um, because I'm hanging it from shelving anyway. So I don't need them, but I will make use of them. Oh, another torch. That is a spare one for when my boyfriend steals the second lot. Okay, and these are the chip on board grow lights that I've already got two of. You get a deal when you buy multiples. I should have bought more than two, but obviously I was paying for the other grow light as well. So I was like, it was getting a little bit pricey for me. Um, yeah, I think ultimately I would like to kind of convert to more of these. Sorry. Is that one? And that is just another one of the chip on board grow lights. So I'm just gonna put them all onto a table. Okay, so what I thought I would do before I put these up is just show you the kind of relative brightness of them and the plugging in process. Even though I'm probably not the most technical or best person to be talking about technical specifications on lighting, I am getting really into plant lights. So you just plug this in and that light has come on. It's not fully in yet though. And then just flick that and it'll come on. So that's way too bright for the camera to focus on. Let's see if I can no, I'm not going to focus on the individual LEDs in there, but yeah, that's kind of relative brightness and just illuminate the table there. See, it's pretty strongly lighting my hand. Okay. And you can hear the fan kicking in obviously with that. Turn that off because obviously the fan does interfere with audio a little bit on when I'm filming. And this giant beast uh, is a different type of light fitting. So I've just got the cable. And I ordered the three meter one. I don't actually think I needed it for this. I thought I was going to get the same sort of fitting, so I thought it'd be handy to have the three meter one for the one of the others. Um, but yeah, a little bit doesn't have an off or on switch that I can see. Oh, it's very heavy. Um, yeah, I can't see an off or on switch, so I'm just gonna, it's gonna be controlled by my timers anyway. So I'm just gonna unplug it while I plug it in. Okay, so I just spent far too long messing about with the cables, trying to figure out what I was doing wrong with this grow light because it wasn't coming on. I emailed Gemma and then as I sent the email, I realized, and I thought I'd show you this because they don't seem to come with instructions and if you're a little bit, you know, not completely tech savvy like me, you might not get this <laughs> straight away. So at the connection point, there are two arrows. Can you see this arrow here? 
and then there's one up there. And these two connections have to be connected in this way. It's like a three pin connection, but those specific pins have to line up to specific points in here. It can't just be any order, so they've put an arrow on to show you this, which I completely missed. So, we'll try this again. Screw that up, and that is connected properly now. So, now we can actually look at what the grow light is like. So I'm gonna turn this on. I don't know how bright this is gonna be compared to the other one. And then we'll do a little comparison side by side. Oh, okay, note to everybody, don't look directly into the grow light when you are turning that on. Okay, ow, um, I'm gonna point that knot at me. So, um, how do I best show this? I guess by holding it up and showing you the lit area. Um, can't really see my hand. Um, I don't really know how I can compare these two though, unfortunately. If I turn... Oh, ow, blinding myself. Okay, so I've got them kind of facing each other. I guess that's the best representation that I can give. So if I turn that one off, this is just the light coming from this grow light here. Uh, turn that to the side. So it's purely the light coming from this grow light. And then if we turn this grow light off, and then the other one back on. So they're both extremely bright. I mean, this, this one here doesn't light up the entire room like this one does. So this one is literally lighting up the whole room. I can barely look in its direction when it's on, it's that bright. And I think the beam angle is also maybe slightly different or maybe it's just because they're so close together or are magnified in some way. So let me get these set up and we can have a look and see what they're actually like when they're being used in the setting. So this big one is gonna go in my wardrobe section. Um, yeah. So I think that that's the best use of it because it's so, so bright. So I can just put it right in the middle and it should light up that whole area, I think. So I will be right back. Okay, so I've just finished setting up the 100 watt plant grow light in the wardrobe. And this is the result. This is the kind of arrangement I've got at the moment, but obviously I'll probably be fiddling with things and tweaking things around a little bit of placement of plants and making sure that nothing is shadowing others too much or utilizing the fact that some are shadowing others to kind of dapple the light and reduce the uh, total light the plant's receiving. But I'm really happy with it. Obviously you can see it's got quite a wide beam angle because it's got the two chip on board lights in there. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. It is exceptionally bright. Like it's probably an even brighter effect than having two of the normal plant grow lights together if that makes sense because obviously you've got them very concentrated so yeah i think that this is a more than adequate light level for these plants might even be a bit too much for some of the phalaenopsis but we'll have to see these are the summer blooming species novelty fowls not the complex hybrids so i'll have to keep an eye on them they can as a general rule take a bit more light than the kind of standard complex hybrid phalaenopsis but we will have to see and it's a little capsicum there. Yeah, so those are my vandas that I've got hanging at the moment and I will be getting some more pot hangers so that I can maybe hang some of the fowls as well and then we can make a bit more use of this space because obviously I've got the light directed so that it's coming from above but it is also coming from the front. So hopefully we can get a few more plants in here and utilize the space better. So obviously I've got the main wardrobe built in like hanger running along there but then I've also got the other two hangers from this little clothes rack as well to make use of. In this corner obviously this is a lower light area it's not going to be getting any direct light but I might put some just complex hybrid phalaenopsis maybe hanging. I've got a little table here as well that I can put a few more plants that are maybe lower light. The 
uh, XRA Little Fragrance there, which is an Arachnus hybrid, is getting some direct light, but hopefully not too much. It's only from the front as well, so hopefully that won't be a problem. So this is my Aerides Laurentiae, which are quite a highlight Aerides. So yeah, Aerides in general can take quite a lot of light. Obviously it does vary between the different Aerides. Uh, but yeah, you can see I've actually put my Rinka Readers Repipath a little bit out of the lighting of the light, so it's not getting the direct beam of light that the others are getting. And this is because it's actually showing quite a lot of the traits of the Rinka Readers Bangkok Sunset, which is uh, it's a hybrid of that. So yeah, uh, it gets very, very purple if you put it in direct light, so I'm hoping that's far enough back, but obviously I can move it further away. So yeah, that's my kind of current setup in that department. I have also put up one of the other chip on board grow lights in my little highlight orchid area. So I'll just turn them on now. See, the fans will kick in so the quality of the sound may drop a bit. I'm sorry for that. That's one. And that's the one I had up before. So this is the light level that I had before for these plants. And that's the light level now with the second chip on board LED grow light there. And I did also hang some, um, it's just a shower like rack, but I can definitely put some small plants in there because they do get quite a bit of light. Yeah, so these are all getting very bright light. Um, have to see how it goes. They are all fairly highlight orchids. So I've got the Oncidiums at the back here and they're not getting quite so much light, but I might have to move them. And the Oncidium shelf, I will be trying to make some improvements to, which is this one here. So I would like to get one of the chip on board grow lights maybe at the top there, take out the strip light. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet. It's taken me kind of nearly all day to fiddle around placing just those two grow lights. So I didn't get a chance to actually have a go at, at doing this one as well, but I will do because I'm not 100% happy with the setup. I mean, they're all flowering. They're obviously getting high enough light, but it's like a personal preference. If I'm not happy with the light level they're getting, it kind of bugs me a little bit. This is my um, Shari baby starting a flower spike. The Nellies are in full swing. We've got one there and one's actually starting just at the back there behind the Miltonia sunset. So yeah, that's kind of my work for today. I've also watered all the orchids. Yeah, creates quite a nice little grow space, doesn't it? Quite happy with that. And obviously I've got all my storage at the top there. That doesn't look particularly tidy at the moment, but so a work in progress. Um, so yeah, that's extended my grow room a little bit. <laughs> I kind of needed it. And I've got all of this shelf space here potentially for maybe some more novelty fowls. We will see. And I can definitely arrange the space a little bit better. Obviously at the moment they're kind of arranged for optimal light for all of them, but like even at the back there, they're getting light at the back of that shelf. So I can fit many more fowls here. And towards the back of there as well, they're getting light. So obviously the more orchids that I put like up higher, the more light's gonna get blocked from the lower ones. So I'm gonna try and utilize the back most and yeah this one might have to get moved a little bit i'm not sure if because obviously the side of it there isn't getting much light so i might just have to maybe rotate it a little bit i'll have to play around and see what i can do that is what i wanted to show you today and you can see that this plant light is amazingly bright uh, one thing i did want to say is it gets very hot because it doesn't have the internal fan cooling that the other modular chip on board grow lights have. Um, I did contact Gemma about this because I was a little bit concerned that it was getting like, like incredibly hot to touch. I even put a little fan up here to try and cool it. And they said that it's normal for it to run about 70 or 80 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's the only thing I would say, but I mean, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, but I am probably gonna keep that little fan on it just in case because it, yeah, it's, it concerned me a little bit, just because obviously uh, the other ones I'm used to don't really run hot at all. Um, 
on the plus side I guess I'm not gonna need to heat this room very much in winter because it's it's raised the um, temperature in this corner quite significantly so uh, it's good that these are all hot growers because it's about like five degrees warmer <laughs> in this cupboard now in this wardrobe than the rest of the grow room obviously it, I'll show you a wide shot it is all fully open and I do have a fan here which is uh, rotates 180 degrees so it's constantly circulating the air around the grow room so in theory it shouldn't be a problem because I've got loads of fans I've got that little fan at the top there I've got fans sort of aiming directly into the wardrobe but yeah it's just something to be aware of if you are looking to purchase one of Gemma's grow lights it's just obviously something to consider um, and also I don't think they really put they do put specifications of sizes up on the website but I think it's really useful to have kind of a footage of what this looks like and the kind of light level it gives because specifications are great if you're kind of really into the plant light scene <laughs> and you're really kind of technically minded but visually I think it's really important to, to see what that converts to so yeah that is the 100 watt plant light and these are the 50 watt modular chip on board grow lights um, they're both chip on board so they're both LEDs on a board many different LEDs rather than just one LED strip so lots of different colours in there and I'll link you below to my initial video on plant lights where I went into a bit more of the technical specifications of these grow lights um, but yeah that's kind of everything for today so thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did then give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates and I will keep you guys updated on the progress of the orchid wardrobe and how these guys are doing under their new higher light setup it definitely makes a massive difference having the two lights there and it gives me much more options for what I can kind of keep under the lights so yeah I'm quite excited I'll see you guys later bye